it's really vast out here, so desolate, so far away from civilization. But that's where two bodies are supposed to be. Dr. Anthony Falsetti is one of the world's leading forensic anthropologists, a veteran of the 9-11 investigation. The Russian government has called him in as part of a team of experts to investigate a 90-year-old crime scene. On this case, there is no room for error. The newly unearthed bodies may belong to long-lost members of the nation's royal family. But no one knows for sure what has really been found. The stakes are high, and the truth of what happened to the Romanovs has long been obscured. History blended with myth and legend. But this investigation could put to rest questions that have kept the world guessing for nearly a century. Did the royal line of Russia end in a violent murder? Or did an heir to the throne escape and live? Falsetti is joined by Dr. Michael Koble, one of the leading forensic DNA experts in the world. He works for the Pentagon, identifying the remains of American soldiers. With the US military's laboratories at his full disposal, he will attempt to put names to these mystery bones. The team is headed into a remote forest, 12 miles outside the Siberian city of Yekaterinburg. This far-flung industrial outpost is where the fate of Russia's royal family was written. Harsh and unforgiving, Siberia has long been a land of exile, of unanswered questions, where people, political undesirables, prisoners of war, disappear. And for the Romanovs, it would be no different. Five children, born into royal lives. The Grand Duchesses, Olga and Tatiana, the flower of young womanhood. Maria and Anastasia are beguiling teenagers. 13-year-old Crown Prince Alexei is the boy born to be king. Millions of loyal Russians revere them, even worship them. A divine family set on earth to rule the nation. But the line will end with them. 1917, the Russian Revolution. In its wake, a civil war rages. Bolsheviks against Tsarist loyalists. The royal family imprisoned, exiled to Siberia, under house arrest in Yekaterinburg. Moscow and the heart of the fledgling Soviet state are 900 miles away. The family are on its unstable fringes. Much of the country is still divided in civil war. In July 1918, the Yekaterinburg Reds feared that a Czech army and white Russian forces were on their way to rescue the Tsar. The decision was made to act. Yakov Yurovsky was the hardliner chosen by the local committee to take over command of the House of Exile. The guards, known to have become affectionate towards the family, were removed. Yurovsky brought in new men with a new mission, to execute the prisoners. In the cellar of this house in 20 horrific minutes on the night of July 17th, 1918, the last chapter of the Romanovs would be written. Just after midnight, the royals are roused from sleep by guards. The family is told that because of anarchist unrest in the town, the upper rooms of the house have become unsafe, that there may be shooting in the streets. The Tsar, his wife, and five children, along with their four attendants, all 11 that make up the royal household, are brought down into the cellar for their own safety. 
Yurovsky and his men enter the room. He has instructed each to shoot a different family member in the heart to lessen the blood flow. There were investigations after the event, and there are written accounts as detailed as they are confusing. But what happened here was both savage and hate-filled. As the smoke cleared, the myth began. Could anyone really have escaped this carnage? The bones now found in the Kopkiaki forest may provide the answers to this question. Shedding fact from fiction in a case that has sparked the popular imagination has proven virtually impossible. But this latest find may give investigators the evidence they've been searching for for decades. The final answer, hidden in the snowy Siberian forest for nearly 90 years. From here, Falsetti and the team must carry on on foot. When I arrive at a crime scene, what I hope to find are the facts. Who found it, when they found it, where they found it, and under what conditions. They have come to meet the men who made the find. Hello, здравствуйте. So, no. What did you find? Что вы нашли? Where did you find it? Останки двух православных святых примерно вот в этом месте. How deep was the burial? The remains have been moved to a morgue for safekeeping. What else did you find with it? Any artifacts? <laughs> what I'm hearing from these archaeologists is they have bones, maybe some projectiles. What we don't have is any evidence of a really controlled excavation, and it's quite frankly making me nervous. All Falsetti has here is a location. But there is no evidence left at the crime scene, and the documentation of the find is scant. The case of the Romanovs is no stranger to hoaxes and cover-ups, and this latest find may be no different. In the days after the killing, newspapers report that only the Tsar has been killed. For eight years, the Soviet state claims that the rest of the royal family are alive and well, but the cover-up fails, and the Russian government changes its story. All 11 members of the royal household executed. But there are reported sightings of Alexei, of Anastasia. Are the children alive or dead? The whispered rumors refuse to die. In Moscow, there is unease about the precise fate of the Romanovs. An imposter claiming to be Alexei is officially investigated. Years pass. Under Stalin, it is forbidden to even mention the family. 1991, the Soviet Union collapses. Local academics go into the Koptyaki forest and dig. Yurovsky by now is long dead. But in papers left to his son, there are clues as to where the 11 bodies of the royal household might lie. As they dig, a shallow grave comes to the surface. Skulls, bones, full skeletons. But something is wrong. In 1991, nine sets of remains were found. There were 11 people that were killed in Ekaterinburg that night. Two sets of remains were still missing. The Tsar and the Tsarina, three of their daughters and four attendants are identified. But two of the youngest royal children aren't among the dead. Now 70 yards from the first grave, this second find. The proximity suggests a potential connection but nothing more. For decades, conspiracy theorists have suggested that this forest may be littered with the bodies of other nameless dead.
Proving that these remains are truly the Romanov children will not be easy. Now in storage in Yekaterinburg City Morgue, the newly uncovered bones are about to undergo the most intense scrutiny 21st century forensic science can muster.